Kansas State had lost to Texas seven times in a row, but now Texas and Oklahoma are gone from the Big 12. Is this the year that Kansas State makes it to the Big 12 championship, wins the Big 12 championship without any hassle from anybody else? They did win it a couple of years ago, but uh, can they run the Big 12 is, is, the, is the question. We'll talk about it on the other side. Let's get into it. The fanatic, but we keep it 100, keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Straight out yeah. of South Carolina, yeah. upstate, yeah. hey, 6 yeah. yeah, the F A N A T T I C, the fanatic where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call it. Welcome to another episode of the fanatic on the fanatic sports network. It's your boy, Coach I. I got my guy, Stat Guy, with me. What's up, Stat Guy? Yo, what's going on today, Coach? Hey man, we ain't talking Kansas State Wildcats, man. This is we talking Big 12 football. And before we get into the preview, man, just know Saturday night, Saturday night snap count is 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 live stream, man, where we uh bring in a panel of content creators that do college football representing all the power four conferences. So don't forget to check that out. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, man. Again, we talk college football all the time, uh, all across uh the con the country, man. We don't just talk one team here and there we talk all college football man so don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you're headed to a game this year hey go to see geek use promo code fan at sports fan at sports you get 20 dollars off your first purchase you might as well save some money on that first game man and listen we got some channel memberships out there we ain't trying to break the pockets man it's just a dollar 99 you get a badge the that for the live stream by your name you get custom emojis uh, and you get to be in the Discord and chop it up with us and the rest of the fan added family, man, and talk a little trash and have a little fun, man. So uh, you want to give a special shout out, right, Jeff? Yeah, I was going to say shout out to our favorite Kansas State fan, our member of the month, um, Nelio. Appreciate all the love and support, man. Looking forward to seeing you in the comment section. Big facts. Hopefully we don't let you down on the preview, Nelio. So let's go ahead and jump into it, man. Listen, we're going to talk about Kansas State. Uh, but we got to start out with that 2023 schedule and season, man. Like last year, Kansas State went nine and four. They lost to Missouri by three, which was a close one. I think Missouri broke a, like a school record for the field goal they kicked to win the game. They lost at Oklahoma State by eight. That was actually their um, outside of the the. Um, that's actually their 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 widest margin loss was eight at Oklahoma at Oklahoma State. They lost to Texas in overtime. They lost to Iowa State by seven. But they ended the, end of the season and went in the Pop Tart Bowl, which is one of my favorite name bowls, uh, and beat a good NC State team, man. So this that season, last year, man, I think Kansas State did what they did uh, like they do, man. I think Kansas State is more consistent than people know. You know, I think outside of the Big 12, they might hear Kansas State and not think of them as a football, what I would consider a football Big 12 power anyway. I think Kansas State, always stays consistent like that. But this year, we're looking to see if they can make that next step and, uh, you know, contend for the Big 12 again like they did in 2020 and win it in 2022. Um, what's your thoughts on that season from last year, Stega? Yeah, I mean, the I guess the biggest thing for me is um, Will Howard leaving in the portal. I remember when it first happened, I was kind of shocked. Like, you don't see a multiple-year starter hit the portal from a team that wins, right? I mean, they're, they're returning, they're, they should be competitive within the Big 12 this year and just up and gone. So that really shocked me, but in looking at it, I'm like, man, they didn't really have a bad loss. I mean, I guess the Missouri loss, losing on the late field goal, Missouri ended up being a 10-win team. So you take it. They really didn't have any, that Iowa State loss, kind of bad, but you- <laughs> But it wasn't by a lot of points. Though, but it wasn't right? by a lot of points. Um, but so I, I really think you got to have confidence coming off of that season, heading into 2024 with the new look Big 12 and the powers that be that ran it now going off to the big bad SEC. That's right, man. And speaking of 2024, let's talk about some of those returning players, that guy that you found that you might be looking forward to. Yeah, so obviously the, the offense is going to be led by Avery Johnson now, who took over, started the Pop-Tart Bowl was a pop top bowl MVP, honorable mention, all freshman big 12 um, in limited play in time last year. So you love that. And then returning DJ Giddens, your 1200 yard running back. And oh, if 1200 yards isn't enough, you go and add Dylan Edwards out of the portal from Colorado to just add to that back. I mean, that's a three headed monster 
of runners in that backfield with what Avery can do with his legs as well. Man, that's right. That rushing attack could could prove to be the best rushing attack in the Big 12. I think UCF might have a little something to say about that. Gus Malzahn likes to run the ball, and they got K.J. Jefferson out of the portal over there. And, and Utah's a physical team, but and then, of course, Ollie Gordon at Oklahoma State. But Kansas State returning all that uh, firepower in that backfield and adding explosive Dylan Edwards from Colorado. We all got to see what he could do, uh, especially like in that TCU game last year. I'm interested to see how they're going to fare, man. On that defensive side of the ball, man, they got some juggernauts over there, too. I know you said you told me they returned, what, 80% of the production or something like that? Yeah, returned 80% of the production on defense. Hey, never a bad never a bad thing um and hey man hit me with that secondary i know that secondary is nice listen J jacob Parrish at corner listen got all big 12 potential uh he had uh four picks i think like nine break pass breakups last year you got uh vj Payne at safety he combined with marquis siegel uh for 120 tackles i mean I think that's if you're looking for a secondary with some uh you know experience in the Big 12, look no further than Kansas State. Right. So. I, they I mean you you gotta like you gotta like what you you gotta like what you see. Right. And then the linebacker room. I mean, can they get some pass rush from the edges and that defensive front? I think that'd be the question going into you know this season. Uh to, to and to help out that run game. Cause look, if the run game is gonna be what we think it's gonna be, they can salt away the clock. And if they can be good on defense, that's going to be a tough Kansas State. Again, hard-nosed football like they like to play. It's going to be a tough out for anybody. Yeah, and you mentioned that linebacker position. Desmond Purnell, um, an outside linebacker, kind of anchors that unit. Um, and I'm expecting potential all Big 12 type season from him this year. Mm, so look, at, talking about the 24 season, we got to talk about the schedule. All right, man, let's take a quick look at that 2024 schedule, man, and see – what we think of it, man. So we'll talk about the schedule in general. Let's just go through it right quick, and then we'll give our what we think may be the win totals for the season. Kansas State fans, if you're rocking with us right now, man, get in the comments. Let us know what the floor is, what the least amount of acceptable wins are for you, and what the ceiling might be, what you think the potential of the team is this year in 2024. So they start out with UT Martin at home. <clears throat> then they go to Tulane. I think that's going to be a sneaky, sneaky, tough game for them. Uh, Tulane's a, a, a good football team. Arizona then at home at BYU. Oklahoma State at home. Then they get a, a, a bye week before Colorado. Uh, at Colorado, at West Virginia, Kansas at home. That's definitely going to be a tough one. At Houston, get another week off. And then they play Arizona State at home, Cincinnati at home, and then finish the season going to Ames, Iowa to take on Iowa State. Now, these games that I got arrows by, these are the games I think, you know, just off the surface, these are the games you look at. You look at Arizona. Uh, although, like I say, coming off that two-lane game, I think, you know, I think Kansas State is the better team there, but I don't think uh, – I think two-lane is going to put up a better fight than people might think. Uh, Arizona at home, uh, that's going to be a tough one. I think they're a contender in the Big 12. Oklahoma State at home, they're a contender in the Big 12. Going on the road to Colorado is going to be interesting because of the, the Dylan Edwards uh, uh, dynamic. Um, and they got playmakers on the outside at Colorado. Then you got uh, Kansas at home. And then you finish the season at Iowa State. And again, I think Kansas State is better than Iowa State. But we'll talk about that here in our win game total. So if you're playing along at home, Win game, we go. Uh, we try to see if we get close to Vegas. Uh, uh, we don't have the Vegas numbers uh, projections. If you're a Kansas State fan, man, you're watching this video, let us know in the comments what the Vegas number is for the season. Uh, but we'll go through. We'll give a point for a win, no points uh, for a loss, uh, and a half a point for a toss-up. All right, stat guy. Um, these first two games, of course, Tulane, I think, again, I think they'll put up a better fight than people think. I think they're, they may be one of the group group of five contenders for that playoff spot for the best group of five. But I think Kansas State would be too much for them. I got got Kansas State at two with those first two games. So I'm going to give them two for the first two games. But, man, at Tulane is scary week two. Um, they are a team that could contend for that group of five playoff first spot. But I think it's going to come from a team that runs the table. And so to run the table, they're going to have to beat Kansas State week two. 
but I'm going to go ahead and give Kansas State the win. Right. I got Arizona as a half at home. I think Arizona is definitely one of those contenders. I think uh, we'll get to see the, that defense against Noah Fafita and, and wide receiver McMillan and see what they can do. So I got this as a half, so I got him at two and a half. Yeah, the second day will definitely get put to the test week three, and I got it as a half as well. So we both got him at two and a half going into the BYU game. I know Pro Bowl is not a place people like to play. Hopefully that for Kansas State, that's not at night. But I just don't think BYU has it this year, so I'm going to give him a win here. So I got him at three and a half. Kansas State is just going to be too much. All right, we both got them at three and a half. Then they get Oklahoma State and Ollie Gordon coming into the house. This is going to be a really, really physical game. They got that bye week after. I think they're going to need it. I'm going to give them a half right here. I think Oklahoma State, I think they play, they're going to be playing similar style ball. And I think it's going to be whoever, whoever can slow the run down for the other team. So I'm going to give them a half right here. I got them at four. I got this as a half as well. Um, and this is my Big 12 championship preview of mm -hmm. who I think is meeting for the championship. How about that? Going into the bye week, then they go to Colorado. I think, uh, of course, the media is going to have fun with this game because of the Dylan Edwards dynamic. Uh, I think this game right here is going to be like opposites of track. Uh, Kansas State is going to want to play physical in the trenches, run the ball, and Colorado with Shadura and those weapons on the outside is probably going to want to pass more. Can Colorado slow down the run attack and, and these returning DBs for Kansas State, how they match up with those uh, wide receivers for Colorado? I got Kansas State winning this game. I think uh, – I uh, and, of course, if Colorado's inside interior defense line is better, maybe they can uh, maybe they can pull off the win here. But I got Kansas State going to Colorado and getting the win. So I got them here now. I got them at one, two, three, four. Half. I got them at three and a half, four and a half. I gave Kansas State the win here as well. I think they're just going to be too much for Colorado in terms of the physicality that's going to be played in both trenches. Um, and so give me the win, and I'm up to four and a half. All right. We both got them at four and a half going into West Virginia. Traveling to West Virginia is always tough because of the distance. Uh, I think um, – I think West Virginia and their pass attack uh, with the quarterback that they got uh, coming back, I want to say Garland Green, Garrett Green, something like that. I think he's he's really good, but I think Kansas State has the DBs for it. I think Kansas State gets the win here. Uh, so I got him at five and a half. I got him winning against West Virginia, moving him up to five and a half. All right. They come home for homecoming against Kansas, uh, the Rock in-state rivalry game. If Daniels, the quarterback for Kansas, is healthy, I think this is a game. I think it's a fourth quarter game. I'm giving him a half here. So I got him at six. I think this all turns into Kansas and what they look like in the quarterback position, if they're healthy or not with Daniels. Um, I'm going to give him a half, but I'm leaning more towards the win. I'd love to give him a point seven five, but I'll give him the half and move him up to six. All right. So then, man, these next three games, man, you got at Houston, Arizona State, Cincinnati. I think they're just better than all three of those teams. I got them at th three wins there, pushing them to nine wins. I do as well. And then finishes in the season. Crazy enough, I got them as a half right here. But I, I, I think going into that, if everything plays out, no injury bug or anything, I'll probably pick them the week of to win the game. But because Iowa State beat them last year, I got to think they got a chance to beat them. And Iowa State might have one of the better defenses in the Big 12. So they're going to Ames. I got them as a half right here, finishing the season at nine and a half wins. Yeah, Iowa State's definitely one of those teams that loves to play spoiler, right? I mean, I can just think back over the years, a handful of times they beat somebody to kind of wreck their season. I think going into this game, the birth in the Big 12 championships on the line, the playoffs is on the line, and I think Kansas State gets it done and finishes with the win. Kansas State fans, let us know what your expectations are. Get in the comments. Let us know what games you think uh, might be some uh, uh, pitfalls for you and uh, what games you're actually looking forward to seeing with this new look Big 12, man. Me and the stat guy gave our opinions on what could possibly happen this season, man. So y'all let us know uh, what you think. Neelio, shout out to Neelio, our member of the month. K-State fan, K-State alum. Uh, we hope we did you proud, Elio. With that said, we're out of here. We got it jumping like it's that valley. I call my dogs out the pound, let's go eat. Turn on the fan at it, let's have a debate. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?